Hello English learners and welcome to another episode of English Lessons with Grammar Man. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a professional English teacher from Australia and I now live in Switzerland where I have my own language learning academy, Progressive English, right here in Zurich. At my school, we teach IELTS lessons almost every day, as well as all of the other Cambridge exams, from BEX to academic, preliminary up to proficiency. I understand how much the results of these exams can impact the student's future, whether that be to get into the university they need to study for their dream job, or for immigration goals, and how far reaching the consequences of achieving their English certification can go. In short, I take this seriously because I know how important the results of these exams are to you. With that being said, let me now give you my top tips for the very start of the IELTS speaking exam. We can call this greeting the examiner and ID check, or some teachers refer to it as part zero. I want you to imagine walking into your speaking exam completely confident that you can answer the first four questions perfectly. Now these first four questions are not part of the, the exam. You're not graded on these, but it will make a great first impression on your examiner. But more importantly, it will fill you with confidence when you walk into the exam because you know exactly what the examiner is going to ask you and how best to respond. We answer these first four questions very directly, which is the opposite of speaking parts one, two, and three, where we expand on our answers. In the greeting and ID check, we do not expand our answers. One sentence is all that is required. Now, before we begin, let me offer this short caveat. I'm going to give you a lot of information. And the last thing I want you to do is to have information overload, or what I like to refer to as analysis paralysis. I'm going to talk about smiling and looking the examiner in the eyes and using contractions and how fast or, or slow to talk. And if you go into the exam thinking about all these things, it's going to be impossible to relax. Or if you start analyzing and assessing what you have already said and think, oh, I didn't use a contraction on that last sentence. Oh no, I'm, I'm going to get a bad score. Then you're not going to be relaxed and you won't be able to perform to the best of your ability. So please don't do that. Nobody speaks perfectly all the time. We're all human beings and the examiners are aware of this and, uh, and allow a bit for this, okay? What I wanna do is tell you what questions the examiner will ask you and the absolute best way to respond. Then you can practice this so it becomes automatic and natural. If the examiner asks a slightly different question, you should develop the flexibility to answer that also. You don't want to memorize your answers word for word, but it is good to practice answering the questions that the examiner will ask you in the correct way. All right, so with that being said, let's go. I'll ask you the first question that the examiner will ask, and then I want you to press pause and then answer me. Say your answer to my question just like this was the real exam. Then press play again and I'll give you the rules to answer the question perfectly. So the first thing the examiner will say to you is, Good afternoon, my name's Jonathan Smith. What's your full name? Or they might say, Good afternoon, my name's Jonathan Smith. Could you tell me your full name please? They will say this or something very similar to this. And you should answer, good afternoon, Jonathan. My name's Michael Jackson. Okay, or hello, Jonathan. My name's Michael Jackson. Or if you don't feel confident pronouncing the examiner's name, just leave the examiner's name out and say, good afternoon. My name's Michael Jackson. Give your full name, the name shown on your passport, not your English name if you have one, or your nickname. So very simple, easy to master. If you adhere to the following rules, you'll start your speaking exam off on the right foot. That is, 
you will make an excellent first impression on your examiner. Rule one, smile and look the examiner in the eye. This is important for all of the speaking exam. Eye contact is essential in Western culture to show engagement in the conversation. It also shows that you are relaxed and confident, which is exactly how you want to appear to your examiner. You can look away for a second or two, no problems. Uh, and you don't want to stare at your examiner and not blink. Uh, that would be a bit strange, but relaxed eye contact is seen as a sign of respect in Western culture for both men and women. Uh, throughout the world, there are obviously different social norms uh, regarding eye contact, uh, especially in some Middle Eastern cultures and Asian cultures. So this is just something to be aware of, that eye contact is very important in Western culture and you should look your examiner in the eye when you speak to him or her. Good. Very easy. I'm sure everyone out there can do this perfectly. So rule two, don't use titles. Titles are Mr, Mrs and Miss. We never use titles with first names in English. So it would never be correct to say, good afternoon, Mr. Jonathan. Never say this, okay? If we use a title, it is only ever with the surname, the family name. But we don't need to be this formal. So we don't need to say, good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Instead, we just say, good afternoon, Jonathan. Or if you don't feel comfortable uh, saying the examiner's first name, just don't say the name at all. Just say, good afternoon, my name's Michael Jackson. And rule three, use contractions so you don't sound like a robot. Remember, contractions are just words like I'm instead of I am, your instead of you are, and uh, we've instead of we have, for example. And we use contractions when we speak in everyday conversation. The only time we don't really use contractions is in, often in writing, in academic writing and in essays and in some business documents. And occasionally I don't use contractions when I'm teaching, normally when I want to emphasize a certain point or for clarity. But for everyday conversations, we always use contractions. So we don't say, my name is Michael. We would say, my name's Michael. Okay, and of course, this goes for the whole of your speaking test. Use contractions. An excellent way to improve your speaking is to record yourself speaking. You could use your smartphone. And if you sound like a robot, it's probably because you're not using contractions. And rule four, the last thing to remember is speed. Now, some students speak very fast when they are nervous. Try to talk at a speed that is clear so that your examiner can understand you. The speed I'm using in this video is around the correct speed that you should be using. All right, question two. The examiner will ask something very similar to, what can I call you? Press pause now and tell me how you would answer this. So they will ask you, what can I call you? And this is especially true if you have a long name or a, a complicated name that's not a typical English name. And the examiner is worried that they might have trouble pronouncing it. Okay, the way to answer this is very easy. So for example, Michael, in Michael Jackson, Michael is not a hard name to pronounce in English. So all I would say there is, just call me Michael. Or if you have a name that English speakers are likely to mispronounce, you can have an English sounding name ready. For example, you can call me Bob, or you can call me Jane, or you can call me Sarah. Any of these examples would be fine. So the way to answer question two is, uh, if you have a typical English name, you can say, just call me Michael, just call me my name, or you can call me Bob or Sarah or Jane, okay? And that's, that's all you should say. Don't expand on that. Okay, question three. Remember, press pause after this question and answer it for me. The question is, where are you from? Or the examiner may ask you, where do you come from? 
Or, could you tell me where you're from, please? Now, this is the one that students um, sometimes get into trouble with. The examiner is not saying, tell me a bit about where you're from. They're not saying that. And they are also not wanting you to expand on your answer. Remember, this is just the greeting and ID check, or part zero. You will give expanded answers in parts one, two, and three, but not in this section. So when the examiner asks, where are you from? What they are asking is, where are you from originally? Um, what country or region are you from originally? What country is on your passport? <clears throat> they do not mean, where do you live? This is often confused. So if I'm in Switzerland, for example, and the examiner asks me, where are you, where are you from? I would answer, I'm from Australia. Or, I come from Australia. And that's it. That's all I would say. What I don't say is, I live in Zurich, so I came from there today with the tram. No, completely incorrect. If you are from the same country that the exam is taking place in, you could say your village or city as well. For example, if the exam is being held in the south of Germany, but you are from the north of Germany, you could answer, I'm from here, Germany, but I grew up in the north, in Berlin. That would be a nice, naturally, uh, natural sounding answer. And one last piece of advice with question three, use the English pronunciation of your country. Obviously, okay, I don't think anyone's going to mix that up, but for example, don't say, I'm from Deutschland. Say, I'm from Germany. Very simple. And that brings us to the last question. Question four. The examiner will ask you, could I see your ID, please? So press pause and tell me how you would answer that. Or they might say, could I see your identification, please? Or, can you show me your identification, please? So ID just means your identification, your passport in this case. So this is super easy. Hand them your passport and say, sure, here you go. Or, sure, here you are. Both of these are grammatically correct. Very easy. I don't think we need to make it any more complicated than that. And that's it, everybody. Very simple advice, but that's all you need to do. It is simple. Um, you do these things and you will have completed part zero, greeting the examiner and ID check, the part that's not really scored, at a band nine level. And you can go into the rest of the speaking exam, the part that is scored, feeling confident and relaxed. That is the why I wanted to get this video across to you, why these things are important, so you can start off on the right foot. Thanks for watching everybody. If you found this lesson helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of my latest content. And most importantly, I wish you all the best with your IELTS preparation. Thanks everybody. Cheers.